I'm in charge of firewood, aren't I? Yes, but the original idea was that you collected up the dead wood, cut it and stacked it. And what's this? And what is that out there? What's what? Do you realise that you have devastated the area with that bow saw? Not me. <laughs> then why has the skyline changed? Nothing's changed. Them trees out there are dead. They are now. Because you've chopped most of them down. <laughs> right, Mr Drake? What? And what's this? It's just a bit of tree. A square tree? <laughs> yeah. With hinges on? It was dark when I did that one. <laughs> and where am I supposed to do me seeding and me repotting? And go over there by the window. I, I was going to build a workbench there. Mr Drake was going to build a workbench there. Well, what about down the end there, by the wall? All right, then you can have that bit. Thanks. <laughs> Hmm. Bit of polish, and this will look rather nice in the sitting room. Beautiful. <laughs> so what are you going to do with your workbench then, Mr Drake? Oh, I don't know. Build a few things. Functional pieces of furniture, that sort of thing. Oh. And did you have a workbench when you was married and living in suburbia? No. Just a shed. A shed? Yes, a small shed. And what did you do in your shed? Uh, nothing, really. Come on. You must have done something in there. Uh, yes, well, I... I used to hide things in there. What sort of thing? Just things. Not... Well, not rude things. <laughs> no, of course not. Only I've heard about married men keeping rude things in their sheds. I, I, I kept a few books in there. What kind of books? Poetry. Books and art. Oh. Oh, one or two small items that I like to look at. If you like looking at them, why hide them? Because of your wife? I suppose so, yes. You mean she didn't appreciate the things you liked? Well, I suppose you could say that our tastes differ somewhat. So, what if you saw something that you liked the look of? Or you read something in a book that... You really liked, and you wanted to show it to her so she could share it with you. She'd throw it on the fire. <laughs> I, I think I'll see what this looks like inside the house. Well, I wouldn't leave it outside if I were you. Especially not after dark. <laughs> the last puncture. It's got to be there somewhere. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Sorry about that, Mr Drake. Keep your finger on that spot, Mr Drake. 
And if something happens, spit on it. Spit on it? Spit on the ball! Oh, I see. <laughs> Anything? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Have another listen. <laughs> You've got some mildew on this wall, Mr. Drake. <laughs> Have I? Gonna need to look at your damn course. Anything? No, nothing. Try further down. And don't forget, if you hear it hissing, spit on it. <laughs> oh well, now, I'm gonna go at speed. <laughs> this hallway too long. From now on, the world. to make. The ball is now fully repaired and is almost ready for a test run. I also have an important announcement to make. You've got a visitor, Mr. Drake. There's somebody out there. I can't see nothing. I tell you, someone was there. Even the dog growled. You mean you saw them? No, but I heard them. What do you hear them doing? Sneezing. Sneezing? Yes. Could have been an animal. Animal? What animals sneeze, don't they? Same as people? Yes, but they don't say bless me afterwards. <laughs> in a clear, loud voice. Well, maybe there's a, a footpath that runs along there. There isn't. Could be a peeping Tom. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't see much from there, would they? A burglar, then. He's got nothing worth nicking. I have. You? Yeah. My ball walking attempt. Could be a competitive spy out there. Spying on what? The way I'm doing it. But you're not doing it. You keep getting punctures. <laughs> I will be doing it. Could be spying on my equipment. What equipment? You're the most unequipped person I've ever met. Me? Hey. Yes. You're all set to walk around the world on that ball, and you haven't even got a Mac. <laughs> I was going to get one on the way. <coughs> In the old days, before I was a cured pyromaniac, I'd have flushed them out. How? By setting light to them hedges. <laughs> I'd have smoked them out. Well, whoever it was, they've gone now.
a neighbour? No, because you haven't got any. Oh. The only other architectural delight is about ten miles away. And that's a pilot. <laughs> oh. Anyway, the last thing you want around this place is visitors. Visitors are trouble. And how would you know? I just know. But you've lived most of your life in the airing cupboard. Makes no <laughs> difference. So how many visitors would you have had? Apart from the occasional plumber. <laughs> <laughs> the ball. He's stuck in the hall. <laughs> I'm going to need some help. Is this the only bar here? Oh, I should think so, sir. Unless, of course, they built another one while we was here nattering. <laughs> Can I help you then, sir? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm, um, I'm looking for the bar counter. We don't have no bar counter here, sir, but if you tell me what it is you want, well, we'll fetch it out to you as soon as we can, sir. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like a fruit juice, please. A fruit juice, sir? Uh, please. Any particular flavour, fruit juice, sir? Orange. <laughs> Orange, sir. Please. It's a, it's a very quiet part of the world out here. Ah, oh, it is that, sir. Do, uh, do by any chance have, have a telephone here? A telephone, sir? Uh, please. Well, there is an odd black thing there, back by the till. I don't hear it ring very often, but I'm told it is a phone. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you think I could possibly use it, please? Oh, I should think so, sir. Will it be important? Oh, absolutely. I'll... I'm a private investigator, you see. Is that a fact, sir? And I'm on a very confidential assignment. What you might call a very delicate matter. Oh, it'd be secret, would it, sir? Oh, absolutely. It's very, very... Ah! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right, sir. You just sit down here and you can get on with your secret confidential phone call. Um... Oh, not clean enough for you, sir. Oh, uh, oh no, it's it's it's, uh, it's fine, thank you. It's uh, it's fine. Uh, uh, mm. <laughs> uh, it's just that I'm I'm allergic, you see, to lots of things. Oh, so. I see, sir. And you'd have bad hands as well, sir. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, this, no, it's, uh, it's just a precaution. <laughs> have you got enough room there, sir? Uh, well, oh, yes, uh, thank you, yes. Um, I mean, there's an old dining hall table out the back, sir. We could soon fetch it in for you. <laughs> no, no, this is, this is too fine. It, uh... <laughs> Too much out. This thing takes half a day to pump up. 
You're not going to get it through the back door unless you let more air out of it. I realise that. That's why I was going to take the door frame out. What? And some of the brickwork. Oh, no. Suit yourself. Right, Paul. Hold on. Does anyone want to know what the record is for survival underneath... No! <laughs> right. Just thought you might be interested. When I was doing my post around, I was very popular. A success, even. And do you know why? Because you delivered your letters by ball. <laughs> Apart from delivering letters and parcels, telephone directories, bits of wedding cake in boxes, I also distributed items of general knowledge. Did you? Yeah, and people on my round used to rely on me for that information. Look, do you think we could move the board? But some of the lonely ones told me they used to stay awake all night waiting for me to roll by in the morning. All right, so uh, the round got longer and I, I never got back to the sorting office till late, but, you know, the GPO... Never realised what they had when they let me go. I bet. <laughs> I, I'm in a, a public house at Mrs. Drake. And I, I, I... What? Yeah, no, no, I, I, I'm still working, yes. It's, I'm reporting in from a public house that's about 12 miles away from where your ex-husband is now living. Is he alone? Well, he must be alone. He's hardly likely to find another woman. Well, there, there are other people living with him, I, I believe, yes. But I, I, I would, wouldn't like to say at this precise moment in time whether or not he's... Uh, uh, <laughs> whether or not he's cohabitating with a lady. Well, I want him watched, Mr Ansell, night and day, because I feel abandoned. Abandoned? Oh, yes. There. Anything else? Sorry. And I don't want him let out of your sight. No, no, Miss Ray. I'll, I'll, I'll certainly continue to keep him under surveillance. Yes. And I want you to try and find out how much money he appears to be spending. Passion fruit. Pardon? <laughs> well, did you get that? Fine. Then back to work. Uh, yeah, right, right, Mrs. Ray. The, the, the only problem is, you see, is my means of surveillance. You see, I, I, I have the, uh, <laughs> I have to hide in bushes, ditches and hedgerows and things. And apart from all my other allergies, I also suffer from chronic ha 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 hay fever. <laughs> and uh, this isn't helped by the fact that the pollen count is extremely high. high, high, high. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Drake? Hello, Miss... Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you once again for all the... Uh, That's all right, sir. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, I don't suppose you're allergic to money, are you? <laughs> money? Oh, uh, <laughs> Fifty P, that's
I'll do a quick spin around the house. Right. Then slam her into reverse, out through the gate, and try her at full throttle along the road. <laughs> throttle. Knee power. <laughs> down by the fireside. Fire's good for shock. <laughs> With his nose and half red. Is, is that a sign of shock? I don't know. The ball? Oh, not another puncture. <laughs> Swear right out and ran into me. I'll make him a hot drink. I'll get him a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> I recognise that sneeze. <laughs> I, I didn't expect to be overtaken by a ball. <laughs> I gave the correct hand signals. Well, I realise that and I appreciate Who it. Who are you? Who am I? Come on, don't pretend to lose your memory. Because we can soon dump you back out there in the woods. No, I'll tell you. I'm a private detective. Private detective? What do you mean, private detective? I'm sorry, that's all I'm obliged to say for now. Oh, is it? Professionally speaking, yes. Leave this to me. Because I know. I've just realised. Realised what? The obvious. <laughs> what, excuse me, but what are you going to do with that? How far? <laughs> How far have they got? For who? The others. What, what, what are others? Them. Them? Who's them? I'm talking about what happened out there on the road. If you're a private detective, then that was no accident, was it? Of course it was an accident. Oh, no, no. That was deliberate. An act of sabotage. 
Sabotage? Yes, by them. Oh, them. Oh, no, no, please, I've got bad eyes. So admit it. You were sent here by them to interfere with my ball. <laughs> to nobble it. Not me. Well, no, don't do that. <laughs> Stop it. I'll get the bends. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll, I'll tell all. I was sent to keep an eye on you, Mr. Drake. On me? Yes. But why? Well, who sent you? Who sent you to keep an eye on me? Tell him. Mm. Morris? You know, no, no. <laughs> Your ex-wife. Oh, so it wasn't them. My ex-wife? Well, I'm afraid so. I I've been hired to watch you to estimate what you've spent, how much you're spending, and how much money there might be left so that she can help herself to it. <laughs> <laughs> she, she hired you? Yes. To come all this way? That's right. To sit out there in the fields and watch my every movement? Correct. And she's paying good money for that? Well, no, you are. <laughs> she said to send the bill to you.